Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, I wanna to do a, a quick video and just talk about how it is not uh, the end. And uh, I just wanna go over a couple of quick news stories that has been going on the last uh, week to two weeks, sometimes a little bit longer, just to see exactly where we are. And there's gonna be things that we're gonna talk about, like uh, little pieces of FUD here, where the uh, US sees is $2.3 million in Bitcoin and how they actually did that. Uh, a statement by former president of the United States, Donald Trump, as he says, Bitcoin is a scam. And those are just two of the recent ones that I wanna remind everybody about, first of all, uh, how we line up uh, as far as like where we are now and the past and actually where we're going in the short to long term. And I wanna just talk about some of the good things that have been happening throughout the entire uh, world, globe, as far as like uh, India, uh, El Salvador, Paraguay, all the way down to uh, Mexico, uh, even the, the great state of Texas that I live in, and all the great things that are happening around the world for crypto and digital assets. And uh, we'll get into all those things. And then finally, I just wanna ask the question, when all these prices go down, what do you do? What do you do yourself? So we're getting all those things, uh, but first take a look at what's going on in the market and why we're doing this video today. Today, it is just one of those uh, extremely red days. I mean, we're down to 1.4 trillion, which sounds kind of ridiculous when you say that. When I say that a lot, it's kind of weird. The market is down to only 1.4 trillion dollars. I can remember just three or four months ago when we were all celebrating because we had broken that all-time high of one trillion dollar market cap and here we are complaining we're like shoot we went below two and now we went below 1.5 and here we are at 1.44 trillion was anybody under the disillusion that this was going to be super easy where we would just put our fiat money into and then everything would just go to the moon and we'd have no turbulence uh, especially with uh, this year being, I think, one of the biggest years that will ever be uh, in crypto as far as mass adoption. I don't think that's how it works. Actually, I'm 100% sure of it. And uh, this is just one of those uh, videos you're going to watch and go like, okay, I get it. So let's see how bad the action is. Well, I can tell you right now, uh, Bitcoins might go below 30,000, just might. And then uh, we're down almost 12%. Ethereum's down 14%. Binance, everything's down mostly double digits. Everything holding for even single. That's kind of weird to say. Is anything even holding single digits? No, it's all massively down, except for Theta Fuel. Congratulations, T Fuel holders, myself included. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So yeah, not a great day for the crypto market. So let's take a look at some of those things which cause us to have fear, which cause us to have uncertainty, and which cause us to have doubt, otherwise, otherwise known as FUD, and see exactly what's going on. So first up, this is a story that we covered briefly yesterday. Uh, US seizes 2.3 million in Bitcoin paid to colonial pipeline hackers. This is all about ransomware. And you heard this, you're gonna keep hearing this again and again and again about how it's weird because people will talk about how awful it is that all these criminals use cryptocurrency digital assets to uh, do these ransomware. Bitcoin is, is the end all be all and bad guy stuff. Well, first of all, uh, before Bitcoin, everybody just used the, the good old American dollar. Cartels used it, uh, terrorism used it, terrorists used it, uh, people who were, you know, just the unscrupulous out there and doing the wrong things they were all using the dollar. Let's just call a spade a spade. So when people say, ah, oh, Bitcoin is, it makes it easy. No, it doesn't. Here's an example. So the first thing I will say is we covered this briefly, but the real question was, how did they recover these funds? We'll get to that in a second. So this is what happened. The Justice Department on Monday, yesterday, recovered 2.3 million in crypto ransom paid by Colonial Pipeline Company, cracking down on hackers who launched the most disruptive US cyber attack on record. Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco said investigators had seized 63 Bitcoins, now valued at 2.3 million. <laughs> well, I bet you know, last week was probably worth a lot more. And to, and to finish up, an affidavit filed on Monday said the FBI was in possession of a private key to unlock a Bitcoin wallet that had received most of the funds. It was unclear how the FBI gained access to the key. So at first glance, when people look at this and they say, hold on, wait a second, are you telling me that the U.S. government can at any time just get a private key, unlock anybody's account, and then take all their crypto and digital assets? I thought you said they couldn't do that. And when people 
read this and hear about this, they don't know what's, they, they have no idea. First of all, they have no idea what Bitcoin and crypto is. And that's this, the reason why that thing that spins above my head all the time, danteacherscrypto.com, that's the reason why I made that uh, website. And I made it 100% free. So anybody could go there and learn. I don't care if you are in North America, South America, if you're in Bangladesh or Sub-Saharan Africa, 100% free is 100% free. If you have a mobile phone and an internet connection, and it doesn't have to be great, then you can go to Dan Teaches Crypto and learn all these things. So again, when we're talking about these things, people are like, oh, well, I don't understand what it is. That just means that the government can crack it. That's not what happened. So here's what happened. This was uh, actually retweeted by Caitlin Long and is from uh, Adam Back. Adam Back, Bitcoin OG says, uh, Bitcoin was not hacked. No Bitcoin wallet was hacked, nor is it is even known to be possible. Uh, ransom hackers, used a rented cloud server. FBI got a subpoena and took control of it and recovered coins. That's it. Pretty simple, right? And you can read the whole thing as it goes through here. And Adam uh, lays it out exactly uh, in more detail what happens if you need more detail. So that makes a lot of sense. So my big thing yesterday was like this. You can't have it both ways, okay? You can't say that, oh, Bitcoin is awful and uh, it's going to lead to more ransomware and then go, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. But, but the government can hack it. So, you know, whichever way you go, it doesn't matter. It's bad either way. No, no, no. That's not, the, that's not what it is. So when people talk about this, make sure you send them this uh, article and just say, no, no, no. It was a rented server. This is how Bitcoin works. Nodes, decentralization. Go to danteacherscrypto.com. Teach you all everything you want to know about it. And that was just one part. And the second part came from this. Um, Donald Trump said that Bitcoin's a scam. All right. So... This was in a Fox News interview, uh, Fox Business. Uh, he says, Bitcoin, it just seems like a scam. I don't like it because it's another currency competing against the dollar. And uh, somebody had said, they go, they go, I didn't hear him say anything except that uh, Bitcoin's currency. That's fantastic. And uh, that is what he said. He's really saying that Bitcoin is a currency. He goes, but... I don't like it's another currency against the dollar. I want the dollar to be the currency of the world. That's what I've always said. And then just as a recap in 2019, he said he was not a fan of crypto. And then in a tweet, he had said at the time, crypto was facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and blah, 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 whatever. So same thing that we hear again and again and again and again. So that's never good when you hear a former president of the United States say that the asset that you are investing in is a scam. I don't care how you want to slice it not a good thing. And that could lead to this, uh, this dip, these two stories. And then, but you have to remember, this is the probably the most important part. It doesn't matter the stories that come out. It's not directly related to those stories. Usually what, what people will do is some people will panic and they'll sell, but a lot of people, and this is why, this was my thesis of always why people, when people would tell me, but Rob, you don't understand. The institutions are coming in and they're going to stabilize everything and you just don't get it because you're just shell-shocked from 2017. I told everybody the same thing I'm going to tell you today. As long as there is uh, greed and manipulation and whales uh, and uncertainty, uh, this will always be volatile and people will always sell to enrich themselves. And that's exactly what is happening here. So when you see these FUD articles, yeah, there can be some some panic sellers, but on the flip side, you're going to see people just go, you know what? I think people are going to sell a lot. I'm going to sell. And then they sell. And then there was a nice little uh, death cross as far as like TA is concerned, technical analysis coming out. And uh, I'm actually going to be on Alex's, Alex Masioli's show. We'll talk about uh, how things are just kind of breaking down. And it is, it's totally breaking down and we're going lower. So before we all lose our minds, relax going to be okay. If you're new here, just take a look at the people around you that have been here for a while. It's a great community. Welcome. Not a big deal. Do I know what's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't even know what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. But I can tell you in the long run, things usually work out pretty well for crypto. If you take a look at Bitcoin in the very beginning, I mean, it was, uh, I mean, I remember reading stories about people were celebrating when Bitcoin hit a dollar because they were so excited that it was on par with the U.S. They were like, I, they, they couldn't even believe it. That's like, amazing. Then when, then when it went to 100 bucks, people lost their minds. 
then it crashed down. Then it went to 1,000, and it crashed down again. Then it went to 20,000, and it crashed down again. Then it went to 60,000, and it crashed down again. Where do you think it's going to go? So if you just look at history, it's a decent indicator of what things are going. Speaking of history, let me show you a little something. So this was from uh, Raul Powell at Real Vision. And what he does is he lays out a pretty good case. He just overlaid um, from the Bitcoin price from 2016 in May, May 2016 to 2018, when we had that massive run-up. And he overlaid that, or he put that in the background, the blue, the blue lines. And the white line is the Bitcoin current price. And you see how it kind of matches up, which is kind of weird because in May 2021, when we were doing pretty well, we had a nice little peak and then it went sideways and then it dropped off towards the end of May and then in June. I wanted to blow this up even more so and just tell you, see really how close we are. Look at this. This right here is May. In blue, that's, uh, what is that? That's May 2017. Make sure, yeah, May 2017. And then over here is July 2017, in blue. In white, we have May 2021. And then we don't have July 2021 yet. But as you can see, if we just cut this in half, this would be considered June. We were actually pretty high uh, in June, if you want to really take a look at it, as compared to what happened before. Then there was a big drop off. And this is, if this is June, then this would be June 15th. And then this yellow line will be July 1st. Let me see. Oh, sorry. So the first, you can't see my, my, my uh, arrow, my cursor. So that first white dotted line where it says June, big red arrow, that's June 1st. The second white dotted line next to that, that is June 15th. And then the, the final yellow dotted line, that's July 1st. So if you look at this, we're probably going to go down again. I mean, even if we take a look at the uh, moving averages, which we're going to take a look at with the guys at Market Rebellion, we're probably going to move down even some more. That's not FUD. That's just what the history shows us. Do I, am I 100% sure? No, I'm not 100% sure. But if it does go down, just so you're mentally aware, okay, it's going to go down. If we look at the past, but what happened after that? That's a good question, Rob. Well, this is what happened. We bottomed out. I mean, a lot of people got out and those people that got out are probably kicking themselves now because they didn't enjoy that massive run up in 2017. When it went from like 1,000, 1,500 bucks all the way up to 20,000. And this is what we're all here for. But again, we could see another, another peak up to 80,000, crash down to 67,000, and then run it up all the way to 100, 130, 150. This is not investment advice. This is investment opinion don't take my word for it. This is just the way I see things. So there is that little piece. And I'm going to skip over to the, to the last part here. So when this happens, and we'll get into the good, the good stuff, but when this happens, you have to remember, what are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what I did today. You know what I did? I woke up at two in the morning because I couldn't sleep for some reason. Something was wrong. Obviously, it was the market. And uh, I saw how much it was going down, and I bought uh, I bought uh, Bitcoin, I bought uh, Voyager, I bought Storm X, I bought some other ones, I forgot which ones I bought. But uh, they were just so low, I'm like, huh, sure enough. I've already bought, this is like my fifth dip I bought. I'm actually running out of money, so hopefully things work out. Uh, but again, if we look at things in the past, I can see it. So the question is, what are you going to do when things start to bottom out? Are you just going to be like, wow, that's going to bottom out? Like this, like my man uh, Diesel, Diesel Kane says, I really hope Bitcoin drops to 10,000 so us peasants can try to get it in the market. Here's my thing. I bet even if it drops down to 10,000, people will be so fearful. The majority, they won't buy it. They won't buy it because they're like, oh, it's good. either it's going to be too risky for them or they think it'll go down to 5,000. It'll go down to 1,000. It'll go down to 100. And before you know it, it just shoots up again. So get in where you fit in. Try to find those, those spots. Uh, that's what I do, not financial advice. And that's where I'm coming from. So... If we take a look at that and all those great things, let's take a look at some good news in the past. Well, just real quick, the Reserve Bank of India, they came out and they made it very clear that, that nobody's banning anything as far as crypto. And they're going to try to incorporate that into their country. So that is a huge news for India. If this would have happened in 2017, we would have already rocketed up. On top of that, El Salvador president announced his plan to declare Bitcoin a legal tender. 
another country, well, a country, excuse me, I think the first is going to say, yes, we're going to, we're going to say Bitcoin is legal tender and is a currency. And they're going to give uh, people who want to move there permanent residency for all you crypto holders. And I believe no capital gains tax. Interesting. So another great big news. On top of that, this just came out. Paraguay congressman calls for Bitcoin adoption. They're going to be working within the parliament or whatever they have over there to actually move Bitcoin uh, to actually adopt it in their country. On top of that, we've also seen that there's a politician from Mexico with laser eyes. I think we all know what that means. And then finally, from the great state of Texas, we've got Greg Abbott coming out. This is a couple of days ago and said, hey, look, uh, I just signed into law a new bill where we're going to have a master plan for blockchain for Texas. If we would have had all this in 2017, we would have lost our minds. And that's why, even though that today is an off day, when in doubt, zoom out. I know it's tough to do those things, but you have to take a look at the entire picture of what's going on. I personally believe that there's a lot of manipulation going on to drive everything down. I, for one, am not selling. And that's it. So thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel tremendously. Also consider subscribing as uh, everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for today. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.